This is DNN News. Your newsreader is Dick Sharp. Good evening. Here are the headlines. Theresa May has announced the date when she will step down as Prime Minister of the UK. She said in a statement that she will resign when hell freezes over. Which, by the looks of the current climate change situation, might not be all that far away. We are getting reports of an incident at the White Cliffs of Dover where a caravan carrying a circus sideshow has plummeted over the edge of the iconic cliff face. The casualties include a bearded lady, a two-headed man, three midgets and an individual who looks like a werewolf. Police have described the incident as a freak accident. YouTube English teacher Mr Duncan has announced plans to produce new episodes of his popular full English video series. In a statement, one of his online viewers said, Finally, the lazy British sod is actually doing something new at last. And that is the news. We now return you back to your normal programming. again we are back everyone oh it's sunday once more not only that it is also a very sunny sunday as well it is absolutely gorgeous so here we go again hi everybody this is mr duncan in england how are you today are you okay i hope so are you happy i hope you are happy on this lovely sunday and I hope your week has been a good one as well. Here we go again. It is another live stream. These weeks are going by so quickly. And already we are into mid-May. I can't believe how fast this year is going. So here we go again. I hope you are OK. It's a beautiful day outside. We are doing some special things today. I thought... We would bring a little bit of the outside into the studio today. So what I've decided to do, I've put a microphone outside and we will be able to hear from time to time the sounds of nature outside. Can you hear the sounds of nature? So we have our special outside microphone picking up all the beautiful nature sounds today and it is a very lovely day let's take a look outside shall we so outside at the moment everything is also looking rather nice <laughs> oh we have the live view of course we do there it is right now outside the window that is the view today it is absolutely gorgeous now i was thinking of going outside to do my live stream but i decided not to at the last minute and the reason why is because we are a little busy at the moment mr steve and myself we are preparing for a special guest who is coming to stay next week so that's all i'm saying I will not give anything else away so that is what is happening so we were going to go outside but we have lots of other things to do as well so many things to prepare I can't begin to tell you how busy we are at the moment preparing for our VIP guest mm. whilst I'm talking about next week it might be a good time to mention that there will be no live stream next Sunday so we won't be here next Sunday but guess what there will be a new yes new episode of Mr Duncan's full English next Sunday so instead of me talking live you will have the chance to see a brand new 
full English lesson. I can't believe it. So maybe you saw the news at the beginning today from our old friend Dick Sharp. Isn't it lovely to see Dick Sharp back? And do you remember Dick Sharp many years ago? There he is, Dick Sharp. He was the newsreader who would often appear on my live lessons uh, and also my recorded lessons. Most of my recorded lessons many, many years ago. In fact, there you can see Dick Sharp way back in 2008, 11 years ago. So it's great that we have the chance to see Dick Sharp back. And did you see it today at the very start of today's live stream? Yes, he's back and we might be seeing more of him over the next few weeks, including also Dr. Poke and Prod. Dr. Poke and Prod will also be making a welcome reappearance to my full English lessons. You heard it first and no, you didn't hear me wrong. There will be some new English lessons coming next week. Next Sunday, instead of the live stream, there will be a brand new full English lesson. I'm not joking, honestly. <laughs> we'll have a look at an excerpt from one of my full English lessons a little bit later on. Meanwhile, of course, we have more important things to talk about because we have the live stream and the live chat as well. Good afternoon to you if you have just joined me. And there it is. The live chat is now very busy already. I can't believe how busy it is at this very moment in time. So let's have a look. I wonder who was first on the live chat today. So let's have a look who was first. Let's go back to the beginning. Wow, so many people are here already. Thank you very much for joining us. Mr. Bruno. Hello, Mr. Bruno. Guess what? You are first on the live chat. So I suppose that deserves a big super duper round of applause. Well done, Mr. Bruno. You are first on the live chat today. Also in second place, we have Kyber. Hello, Kyber. Nice to see you here as well. <laughs> oh, that was good. I don't quite know what I've just done there. <laughs> we appear to have lost the live stream. That's not very good, is it? Come back. Don't leave me. <laughs> We've lost the live stream. That's not very good, is it? I'm very sorry about that. I pressed the wrong button there. It's YouTube's fault. I'm going to blame YouTube. So <laughs> hopefully we will go back to the live chat in a moment. If not, I don't know what I am going to do. I really don't because I think we've lost the live chat. Oh, dear me. That's not very good, is it? <laughs> I, just can't, I can't believe that the live chat has gone off. Well, that's good, isn't it? So let's have a look at something else, shall we? Last week, do you remember last week, Mr. Steve and myself, we were looking at the horse and also the cows last week. A lot of people said, Mr. Duncan, can we see it again? Because it was so beautiful. OK, then.
thank you once again to those who said mr duncan can we see the lovely horses again so now well <laughs> your dream has come true i have some good news for you we have the live chat back so here we go let's try again shall we i'm very sorry about that i did press the wrong button which does happen from time to time normally it's mr steve normally who presses the wrong button but today yes it's me who decided to press the wrong button so let's go back a little bit on the live chat and see who was on earlier because i don't like to leave people out sometimes i do get told off sometimes i am told mr duncan you sometimes you ignore us on the live chat so i will try to include as many people as possible hello galena also theo fabiana fabiana oh hello there you're watching in amsterdam in the netherlands i've been there a couple of times a very interesting place avon hello avon thank you for calling today also mr bruno nice to hear you have good weather in switzerland apparently it is cold and cloudy oh dear me julie is here mika hello mika can i just say something to mika because now and again i get very busy here and sometimes uh, i forget to mention things that i should mention a couple of weeks ago i had a nice letter via email from mika who sent a short story can i say thank you very much for your story it was very much appreciated and i did read it helena hello helena also pedro is here alamgir tran hello tran nice to see you sukat what a beautiful sight an amazing day in much wenlock it is it's very nice here today here it is sunny as well but a little colder yes it's not too bad here we have a lot of sunshine and it's rather mild to say the least and apparently next week it's going to get even warmer apparently next week it is going to be warmer than the mediterranean can you believe it so if you are about to go on holiday <laughs> to a hot place there is a good chance that here in the uk we will be having warmer temperatures or hotter temperatures than where you are can you believe it thank you to guadalupe oh the horse is guiding mr steve's arm i think those horses sometimes get a little lonely and they like to have some attention rita is here apparently today it is mother's day in the united states so just in case there are any mothers watching around the world in the usa happy mother's day to you louis is here also alejandro hello to you hello mr duncan i have to tell you i've been teaching english for more than eight years using your videos here in chile it's an honor learning with you and to be a better teacher every day thank you very much for that that's very kind of you to say and of course you are more than welcome to use my video lessons in your classrooms if you like there are many people around the world using my live streams and also my recorded lessons in their classrooms so yes you are more than welcome to do that if you wish irene says it's good to see you again mohammed is here as well and also belarusia nice to see you here the internet connection is not very good here at the hospital oh i see so i'm guessing that you are now at the hospital with your mother so can i send you and your mother some best wishes today mika says good to hear that you read my story thank you yes mika sent a short story a bit of a science fiction story which of course is one of my favorite types of story i love science fiction movies and i love science fiction stories in general diane is here i have a question for mr duncan oh i always get a bit worried when people want to ask me a question sometimes the questions can be very personal i think so rita mr duncan 
it is also mother's day in brazil oh okay then so it would appear that there are many countries celebrating mother's day today not here because we had mother's day a few weeks ago but today it is mother's day in many parts of the world mr bruno i hope the weather in scotland is good next week because i am visiting edinburgh really oh i see maybe you can stop here for a cup of tea or maybe a slice of cake because we have a special guest staying with us next week who is it i might tell you later on but then again i might not alessandra says good morning from brazil brainstorm hello brainstorm and thank you for saying hello also lena is here i am going to drink some vodka for mr duncan so i can understand your speech better really do you need to get drunk to listen to me some people say that my live streams are more entertaining if you are slightly drunk jamelia hello jamelia i have not seen you for a couple of weeks on the live stream so thanks for joining me the horse looks like it is in need of some tender loving care i think so i agree with you the horses that my neighbor owns are very friendly especially the brown one the brown horse is very friendly alam gear says midsummer's weather is very hot and i am at the top of our building watching mr duncan's live chat well i am always interested to find out where you are watching so thank you very much alam gear who is sitting on the top of his building watching my live stream right now lots of things to talk about today by the way we have many things that i want to discuss including shopping do you enjoy shopping now it would appear that more and more people like to do their shopping online now for example here mr steve and myself we actually do our grocery shopping on the internet so we don't go to the supermarket anymore to buy our vegetables and our fruit and things like that and our, our normal groceries we don't do that anymore we normally order them on the internet so that's what we do but now and again yes we do go to the shops we go to town to do a little bit of shopping but not very often what about you also talking of shopping what was the last thing you ever purchased what was your most recent purchase that's a great word by the way purchase if you purchase something you buy it purchase also purchase can mean to get a firm grip on something so if you get a very firm grip on a thing you get purchase you need to get a grip so you don't slide around you need some purchase hello again last week my students learned about sad from your lesson oh i see that's very interesting thank you again alexandro hello again last week my students learned about the words happy and sad from lesson number six well i'm glad that my lessons are useful to you burlop says hello mr duncan and mr steve and hello to all the classmates hello to you as well belarusia says thank you classmates you are lovely thank you anna rita maria palmyra and all of you belarusia we send our best wishes to you and also your mum as well coming up later on mr steve will be here what are we talking about today well today we are talking all about words and idioms phrases to do with color how many phrases can you think of <laughs> yes mr steve will be here 
a little bit later on we're bringing a little bit of the outside atmosphere into the studio so we have our outdoor microphone capturing some of those lovely summer sounds i think it would be fair to say that summer has now arrived here in the uk so there you can see we have a microphone picking up some of the beautiful sounds outside and of course we have our live camera as well so there it is a view outside right now it is an absolutely gorgeous day now we were going to go outside to do more to do our live stream in the garden but unfortunately we have a busy week ahead because we have a special visitor coming to stay for a few days and because of that there will be no live stream next week also it's worth mentioning that there will be a new yes a new full english lesson next week i'm not joking a brand new full english lesson next sunday so there is no live stream next week but there will be a brand new full english lesson talking of which we're now going to take a look at an excerpt from one of my full english lessons one of my old full english lessons and this is from full english number 13 and then after that mr steve will be right here Can you see what I'm holding here? It's something sweet and very easy to make. This is meringue. Meringue is a type of sweet food made by mixing well-beaten egg whites and sugar together and then baking it until it becomes crisp on the outside. A meringue can be eaten on its own or used as a topping for desserts, especially pies. The center of meringue tends to be soft and sticky, just the way I like it. This particular meringue has been colored with strawberry juice and smothered in white chocolate, which means that I'm now in confectionery heaven. By the way, the word confectionery is another word for sweet things, such as chocolate and candy. They are both types of confectionery. It's time to take a peek at another buzzword. A buzzword is a word or phrase that is popular during a certain period or is used frequently. Today's buzzword is radical. The word radical as an adjective means something relating to or affecting the fundamental nature of something. To change something from its original form to something more extreme or profound might be described as being radical. Forming an inherent and fundamental part or nature of someone or something. Some radical differences exist between those who follow the news and those who don't. A medical procedure that will be completely curative is radical. Something characterized as being a departure from the traditional. It may, in some instances, prove to be innovative or progressive. A radical approach. A radical alternative. A complete social or political reform supporting an extreme idea or concept might be described as radical. As American slang, it is sometimes used to express very good or excellent, although this use is now seen by many as out of date and old fashioned. As a noun, the word radical is a person who advocates others to push for a complete change or move away from the current methods of thinking. 
radicalism is the noun that names the act of being radical to convey radical ideas to others is radicalization to radicalize someone is to persuade them to follow a way of thinking that to others might seem unacceptable or extreme then there is radicalization which is the noun that names the action of radicalizing someone black shoes and socks with shorts oh what a fashion faux pas they appear so odd together when looked at from afar shorts with black shoes and socks should never ever be seen even if you squint the sight is still quite obscene black shoes and socks with shorts please be off and make it quick as those black shoes socks with shorts are making me feel quite sick do you ever brush something under the carpet no i'm not talking about doing the housework in this case i'm talking about trying to forget something or to pretend that something does not exist the idiom brush under the carpet means that you would rather forget that something bad unpleasant or difficult to deal with has occurred or will occur you try to brush the bad thing under the carpet you try to make it go away by consciously denying it you want the thing to go away so you try to brush it under the carpet there is no point in you trying to brush this under the carpet let's just brush all this bad news under the carpet shall we i'm just eating a piece of orange here mm. Probably not a good idea, but there, it's too late. I've done it. It's happened. <laughs> Stand by with Mr. Steve. Yes, he is coming. A lot of people say, where is Mr. Steve? People love to see Mr. Steve. I think Mr. Steve might be more more famous than me, uh, I must admit. And he's looking very cool today. He's actually rolled his trouser legs right up to his knees, showing off his very hairy calves. So here he is. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together for Mr. Steve. Hello, everyone. Hello, Mr. Duncan. Hello, wide world of English and all the lovely comments that I've been reading on the live chat, Mr. Duncan. It's a lovely day here today. It is. In the UK. I'm a bit hot and flustered because I've been out in the garden doing bits and pieces, cleaning the windows. A lot of people have been commenting on Mother's Day, haven't they, today, mm. uh, Mr. Duncan? Of course, it's not Mother's Day here in the UK. No. No, because we've had Mother's Day. Uh, so a lot of the world have Mother's Day today, but we don't. We've already had our Mother's Day. So that's why I'm not with my mother today. <laughs> and nor are you. Not that you would be anyway. <laughs> Mr. Duncan. OK, that's, that's good, Steve. Well done. Oh, huh? controversial. Well, n n talking of controversial, Steve, this week a radio presenter was sacked. Did you hear about that? A radio presenter, I did. a radio presenter was sacked for for putting a joke picture on the internet that showed the royal family and the royal baby as 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 a monkey, so that the actual baby, the royal baby, looked like a monkey, and he was sacked. That's it, gone. So sometimes you have to be very careful, don't you, what you put on the internet and what you say on uh, on uh, live english lessons yes. across the world yes especially you steve because sometimes steve does make the occasional faux pas or i might give my 
opinions about something which may be controversial uh, but we don't want to get mr duncan's channel into trouble no uh, we don't want any black marks against your channel ah i see what you mm, did there because today a... today we are talking about idioms and phrases to do with color so yes black mark a black mark can be something that is is maybe a negative thing that is put next to your name you yes. have a black mark black mark it means that it can have implications something something you did which was maybe wrong or seen to be wrong uh but can have implications for for a long time to come yes because literally your teacher at school if you were bad might have put literally put a black mark against your name mm. uh but if, if that happens to you in society or in your job uh or in anything that you do it means that uh people are wary of you they yes. might not let you to into a party they might not let you have a job in a particular place or they might not let you speak mm. Uh, or you might not be included in a circle of friends because yes. there's a black mark against you. You might have said something horrible to somebody in a group of friends and they chucked you out. OK, <laughs> that was very extensive. So they're a taste of what is to come a little bit later on. We are looking at words and phrases, idioms to do with that. I remember at school, I always got black marks or the only thing worse than that was was a red cross. So if, if I if I did some homework or if especially subjects that I didn't like, such as mathematics, uh, as you all know, I hate maths. I'm not very good at maths. And I used to get these big red crosses through all of my homework from my maths teacher. So, yes, uh, that did not go down very well. I must say it didn't do my ego much good. That might be the reason why. To this very day, I am not very good at mathematics. I'm sure the black marks that you had at school weren't bruises that you had upon your body because you were being beaten up and bullied at school. Wasn't well, it anything to do with that, was it, Mr Duncan? Well, I wasn't beaten up at school. Oh. I don't, I don't remember ever being beaten up at school, Steve. Good. I'm glad we've cleared that one out. up. <laughs> I don't think I was ever beaten up. I was once dumped in, in the waste paper basket in the classroom. So some of my lovely classmates carried me to the front of the class and they, they dumped me into the waste paper basket. I How remember, horrible. I remember that very, very clearly. I, st I still have nightmares about it. <laughs> so you get your revenge, don't you, Mr Duncan? It's funny how karma, we've often said this, and you've said this on many occasions, people okay. that have done bad things upon you or against you in the past sometimes come to a bit of a sticky end. Yes. It's funny that, isn't it, Mr Duncan? It's, it's not... not that there's anything you're doing but it's almost like there's somebody looking after you mr duncan uh, and uh, the people that are bad okay towards you yeah end up getting their comeuppance um, i must admit you're bringing some very strange things up today it's just the way it flows the conversation is flowing in all directions mr duncan trust me this is not flowing it's more <laughs> like it's more like effluence but things have happened to people that have you when people have done bad things against you they've ended up well, let's not go into that, but uh, yes. No, I, I wasn't going to go into that. It I was, just want to say, don't cross Mr. Duncan because there will be a curse on you and something bad will happen to you. Thanks for that, Steve. Note. No <laughs> one's going to come near me now, although there's nothing new there. So, Steve, we are talking about shopping today. Now, I, I mentioned earlier that you and I, we, we now buy our, our groceries through the internet now there, there is of course a, a positive side of that but also a negative side can you think what the positive side is well the positive side and it's not just our groceries i buy virtually everything now through a company let's just say it's a it's a large forest the name comes from a large forest <laughs> somewhere in south america um because it's just so convenient. We've just got such a busy world now um, that we haven't got time. On a Saturday, for example, you and I, 30 years ago, we used to we used to go into town. We used to spend all day wandering around the shops, 
um, looking for things to buy or mm. buy new clothes or anything that we had to buy. I used to make a list go out. But it's just so inconvenient now. There's too many parking restrictions. You've got to pay for parking everywhere in town now. Mm -hmm. Then you get fines which put you off. It's convenience. Convenience is why people are being pushed to buy things online. Oh, don't forget also, Steve, 30 years ago, there were actually shops in the town <laughs> to shop at. That's right. But <laughs> one of the biggest bugbears or annoyances I have, and it's why I've been put off shopping in town is one you have to be surrounded by lots of people <laughs> you might not want to be surrounded by yeah. because the the standards of people i think out in public now have, have diminished considerably so you have to you have to it's just not very nice uh, and the shops are closing and local councils force you you can't even you used to be able to drive into town yes and you'd always be able to find somewhere that was free to park and you didn't have to worry you just left your car over the years they've the councils have literally taken all the free parking spaces away so you have to have coins you have to carry coins in the car to you put mean, in meters yeah, money you mean money money which is inconvenient <laughs> uh and the, the latest ones we've got here in the uk are they won't just let you put you know a pound in and park for a couple of hours you've now got to put your registration you've got to stand there yeah. perhaps in the pouring rain putting your registration into this machine then you put your money in and then out comes your ticket yes the inconvenience of that yeah. is is they it's colossal yes you, you, didn't you tell us this exact same story about three weeks Probably. ago it's one of my real annoyances which is why i don't go into town anymore because it's just become it's just become an uh, and not a very nice experience yes well but one of the main things i just mentioned i'm trying to lead into is the fact that there aren't many shops now to shop at in town no. so if you go into town you will see either lots of vacant shops which means they are empty they're, they're, there's no trading taking place they're just empty units mm -hmm. or they're just all charity shops so if you go into many towns now you will just see charity shops selling second-hand clothing uh, and, and everywhere else the, the shops are pretty much empty oh and of course of course there are places selling food <laughs> but That's sometimes it. there are too many places selling food there are coffee shops everywhere um convenient food shops burger places things like that it's the town has become somewhere for young people to hang out uh, it's mobile phones charity yeah. shops um uh coffee shops and yeah. that's about it that's it um and the high street is dying yeah and i don't think there's anything anyone can do about it because People have discovered the convenience of, of shopping online because they've been put off through decades of, of uh, oppression by councils. Oppression. Yes, I'm calling it oppression. It's the councils that have killed off the uh, have killed off the high street, in okay. my opinion. <laughs> it might be a bit of uh, a, vi but it might, Steve. It might be a bit of a vicious circle because you yes. have you have fewer people going into town, so the councils have to make money somehow because they're not making money from the shops that they rent out yes. to the retailers. So it is a bit of a vicious circle. But of course, as I mentioned, there is a positive side and a negative side to ordering your food. And that's what I'm talking about at the moment, okay. your groceries online. So the positive side, of course, is you can get your things conveniently. But there is also a, a, a negative side in which you might find that when the delivery arrives, there are many things that they haven't got. So you still might find yourself having to go to the supermarket to buy things because the, the home delivery that you had didn't include some of the things that you ordered. So you might still find yourself having to go to the supermarket. So that happens sometimes. But I think, yes, I think overall it's quite convenient because we have a special guest coming this week don't we Steve we do we do indeed a special it's, guest uh, coming to stay we can't say who it is it's top secret one thing's for certain this special guest will not be appearing in front of the camera I think that's true because they're a little camera shy yes like most people are <laughs> 
Yes, Mr. Duncan. And uh, yeah, so you're, you're so, yeah, that, that's the thing about go shopping online, isn't it, Mr. Duncan, that uh, you are right in that sometimes you place an order for groceries and you might have 20 or 30 items and then five of them aren't on there. Mm. So you have to go out anyway. But that's not too bad for us because you can have the main shop coming that way and then anything that's missing, because I'm out and about all day in my job, I can just pick those small little items up. Mm. And that's not inconvenient to do. Yes. Um, so certainly here <clears throat> in the UK, probably in lots of parts of the world, the high streets are dying. Yes. Uh, for various reasons, that's uh, it. Some of well, which we've mentioned. Well, it, it seems like every week now there is a big department store or a big chain of shops going out of business. So it is happening quite a lot. But I'm just wondering what the the most recent thing you bought, Steve, was, and where did you buy it? Well, I this is I've brought it here because you asked me to prepare. Yes. <laughs> Shall I show it to the viewers? That's it. So it's this. <laughs> now, what does that look like to you? I shall tell you. I shall show you what it is. It looks like something that's been swept off the floor of a, a woodwork shop. It's wheat bran. Oh. Now, one, this is difficult to to buy in the shops. I, I ought to explain why I why I use this. Oh, Let's just say it's to keep my bowels regular. Oh, for goodness! <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, because uh, you know you need to have. Uh, high fiber in your diet if you're going to uh, if you're going to keep your bowels moving regularly which okay. is something if I that I something I've got a bit of a problem <laughs> with so uh, this is something that I you can't but you'd have to go to a specialist shop you'd have to drive somewhere to buy it and that's the good thing about the internet as well ordering online is that you can find things online which would be difficult to find in the shops so I wanted this. I wanted some organic wheat bran. Why organic? Because the bran is the outside coating of the wheat. And that's if any, if there's anything sprayed on the wheat, it's going to be in that bran. So I, I'm a bit obsessed about that. So I wanted organic version. And I bought a load of it online. It was very cheap. It came in within two days. And uh, now I'm regular as clockwork. Yes, yeah, good. That's this is information that we really needed. So I bought it online, and that was the last thing that I purchased. So the most recent thing you bought was a big bag uh, of of grain to make you go to the toilet more regularly. Fiber. and I'm stirring it into cereal, um, making it into stirring it into yogurt. It's actually pretty unpalatable. Um, because uh, so what's far more palatable is is all brand cereal, which I I have a big bowl of that sometimes as well. <laughs> okay. But uh, but that's the last thing I purchased. So Mr. Duncan, what was the last thing you purchased? Wait there, I've got something for you, Steve. I'm okay. going to throw this to you. So I I know that you're taking a lot of bran at the moment, so you might need this. Wait there, I'm going to throw it to Mr. Steve. This, Mr. Duncan. <laughs> is i believe our last roll of toilet paper in the house yes that's another we've run out yes that's another reason why i've got to do a shop online tomorrow and we've got to order extra toilet paper because mr steve is now much more regular with his bowel habits than he used to be because of his high fiber diet oh it's wonderful so well <laughs> my most recent purchase was a couple of days ago I, I bought this online through that wonderful website I, I, I get the feeling that Steve thinks that Amazon is actually based in South America it isn't no I just didn't say that Mr Duncan oh I just said uh, the name of it sounds like a large forest in South America oh okay then <laughs> so South America so so Amazon isn't in South America but the Amazon is so there it is the most recent per the most recent purchase that I've made online and it's something very useful it's actually helped to do today's live stream can you believe it because my my lovely DSLR camera was was covered in dirt the little sensor that reflects the image that you can see right now so I, I bought this on amazon.com 
I wish they would sponsor me. That would be nice, wouldn't it? You so, look very clear and, and and sharp today, Mr. Duncan. Yes, <laughs> that's because I've cleaned my sensor. That's what I mean. I have a lovely clean sensor. And this is the most recent thing that I bought online. So this is my little sensor cleaning kit. So you can see me in full high definition, sparkly vision. Isn't that nice? So there it was. But what's the most recent thing you've bought? Did you buy it online or did you go to the shops? Shall we have a look at the live chat, Mr. Steve? It is because it's not working on my uh, on this this this. Well, it is, but it says it's in slow mode. It says slow mode is on. I don't know how to turn that off, Mr. Duncan. No, it's it's OK. It's, uh, that doesn't refer to you. On I'm the, always in slow mode. No, I mean it's okay that it doesn't. That, yes, it's not important. It do, it doesn't affect the uh, device. Lilia says, "How fast is is a uh, forest in the <laughs> South America delivery in your area?" I can say Amazon, can't I? Just say There's Amazon. There's really only one main online shopping site. It's well, you can get it very quick, Lee. <laughs> ah, so um. Uh, Sometimes, if you order before midday, you can get it the next day. Yes. Very quick. Well, sometimes later than that. I know. I've ordered things at four, maybe five o'clock in the afternoon, and they've still come the next morning. I, I don't know how they do it. <laughs> it's like magic. I, I think maybe there are some fairies living at the bottom of my garden, and, and, and they work for Amazon, and they are actually creating this stuff the stuff I order at the bottom of my garden because that's how it comes so quickly so it's almost magic I think sometimes Amazon is magic well uh, tin says here today is a big day in the UK can it, you guess <laughs> it's a big day here is it a big day is it because we're live do you think that's what it is is it anything that's a bit egotistical is, I wonder if it's anything to do with the royal baby maybe or, it's, oh so much, so much of the royal baby or is it something to do with football football oh yes i bet it is is it is it something like the the cup final <laughs> is it the cup final the trophy are they are they playing a football match so one one team will win a trophy I wouldn't be surprised because uh, we don't follow football. We don't. Apparently, we've been very successful. Oh, English teams have been very successful in in across Europe. Oh. Uh, this week, um, so maybe somebody can uh, tell us what that was because we completely missed it. Although, if we were apparently, it was like the greatest week in British football for for, for, for ever. I think, Have according you? to the media. Oh, I see. And we've missed it all, Mr. Duncan. Well, I don't follow football, and you don't. No, well, I don't exactly, Mr. Duncan. Uh, but I want to know what this big day is. I would love to know. Uh, so it's it's nothing whatsoever to do with the royal baby. Definitely not. Belarusia says she doesn't have a credit card to buy things on the internet. That's the thing. You do need something. But you can have PayPal, can't you, which uh, Lewis has mentioned. Uh, so uh, you can pay by PayPal. So you just transfer things across, don't you, yes. from your bank. So you don't have to have a credit card. In fact, PayPal, I think, is a very safe way to pay for things. Yes. It's also a very good way of donating to my YouTube channel. You can see the address underneath exactly. going, going by. Yes. So if you wish to make a donation to my lovely, lovely live stream to help it keep going forever and ever and ever, make a donation on PayPal. There, the address is going by right now. You can see it at the bottom of the screen. So, Mr. Steve, the live chat is very busy. Now, let's just have a quick look at some of the comments because a lot of people are talking about shopping. It, it would appear that we've picked a, a very good subject to talk about today. Well, everybody likes shopping, uh, but we, we always say that we don't enjoy shopping. I don't enjoy. But when we say we don't enjoy shopping, we don't enjoy driving into town parking walking in surrounded by hundreds of people yes. uh 
and then it's just, I find shopping very stressful um, because once I get into a shop, the thing that annoys me the most is that there's usually loud music playing. Yes. Sounds like I've really got to a certain age in my life where I can't cope with things. That's but it. loud music in a shop, as soon as I walk in, that's it. It's all over that's because it. I can't make any decisions no. about what to buy if they're playing songs that I know mm -hmm. or even songs that I don't know because all I can think about is the, is the music. Okay. So I go in and I, I get confused and walk out and don't buy yeah. anything. So I don't know why shops think that this this makes people buy things. I mean, obviously, it probably does. Yes. But it must be, it must be putting off, it must be encouraging maybe 75% of people to buy something, but 25% are completely put off. Okay. So where, where are these statistics come from? I've just made them up. Oh, I see. Okay, that's good. Uh, <laughs> well, I'm guessing it must be more than 50% because with the music there because otherwise they wouldn't put it on but I it just I, I mean I, I've always been like that even when I was in my 20s okay. if I go into a record shop to buy a record or a CD okay as soon as I went in HMV used to be a popular shop to buy CDs and music in the UK and yes. you go in there and there'd be music on at a very loud volume. Yeah, well, it is a it is a music shop selling music. But I'd go in there and I can I I couldn't think what I'd gone in there to buy. Oh, okay. Because it was so I'd just walk out or I'd get very confused and that, I'd go home. That, that the most confusing thing about that is you going to a record shop or a music shop and they're playing music and, and you find that annoying. But, but that's it's, what they, it's always on too loud. Yeah, okay, you are definitely sounding like an old fart now. It just, just well I can sit at home on the internet I, oh yes that looks nice that looks nice and just buy it and it's just I don't know whether it's good for the environment well the internet uh, well no ordering online because it can't be very good all those lorries and vans well, how, uh, delivering to yeah. our houses individually well, how, how do you think how do you think the goods get to the shops do you think that they, they they magic them there do you think they have some Star Trek transporter system? Well, yes, but they'll all go in one big lorry. Yes. But then if if I wanted to buy something, I'd have to drive into town anyway. So it's the same as a van coming here. So probably it's probably carbon neutral. OK. Uh, and I probably buy less because I don't walk around shops all the, all the time. Because I think if you wander in, in and out of shops, you end up buying things. <laughs> You don't really want no. so you're consuming more and the more you consume the worse it is from the environment so uh, I don't know how you calculate the uh, impact of uh, Amazon on on the uh, global warming but uh, <laughs> okay uh, put a, it this way there is a strange irony there isn't there though where, where you're worrying about Amazon affecting the, the environment and then there is the Amazon itself that's being affected by environmental changes it's very strange that look at that it's a strange sort of connection there there's one thing of course that internet shopping doesn't allow you to do and that's shoplift you can't steal things on the internet Ooh, so ah interesting yeah, you, see, you see that's a good idea. that's a thing yes I expect yeah. actually probably a lot of shops Mm, well, that's a good business model, isn't it? Yes. Uh, so no one can steal anything. Nobody can steal anything. <laughs> but yes. Lewis makes a point here about football. I can't understand why a football player should earn three million euros a month. Well, exactly. It's just kicking a ball around. Yes, they may be good at it, but I don't think they deserve that much money. It's huge amounts of money uh, uh, in in, uh, in in football. And uh, you know wh wh why would somebody that sa why should why would somebody that saves someone's lives like a doctor uh, be earning far less or a nurse or a teacher that's teaching somebody, Mr. Duncan? Why aren't you on three million euros a month? I wish for I all was. the people you're teaching English around the world. I wish I was on thirty euros a month. That would be <laughs> that would be nice. It is. That's just that's just the the, the world we live in uh, <laughs> that um, celebrates maybe the wrong things uh, in terms of 
reward. You know, Steve, uh, you that's are that's controversial again. Yeah, Steve, you are really swimming against the stream there because a lot of people enjoy watching football. It's market forces, isn't it? That the uh, football players like a, like a lot of uh, Go on. athletes and Go on. Uh, Kevin Keegan. Yes, um Kevin Keegan. They're in demand. Yeah. So it's market forces. So if one team wants them and is prepared to spend a million, another team might say, well, I'll have them for two million. OK, yeah. So we, it's market forces, but yeah, there we, should be a cap on it. OK, we understand, Steve, the, the concept of that. The fans are having to pay for the tickets. Nobby Styles. Aren't they? They're, they're having to... Uh, yeah. Uh, pay for expensive tickets to go and watch the matches. Yes. They're having to subscribe to uh, mm. Sky TV or something Sky. like that. Okay. Uh, or, or satellite feeds in order to be able to <laughs> yeah. watch their matches. Sorry? Huh? Uh, because they know that people are so hooked on it that they'll pr yeah. pay anything. Okay. Um, but that, yeah, that's a whole subject in itself. Oh, wow. Goodness me. I, I, I have no idea what you just said there. Nobby Styles. Who remembers Nobby Styles? He was actually a football player many years ago. Kevin Keegan. Kevin, do you remember Kevin Keegan? Uh, yes. Well, I do. Yes, because uh, but whether anybody else knows Kevin Keegan. Well, for a short time, he was actually a football manager. I don't think he is anymore because I think they sacked him. But yes, um, yeah, um, yeah, we're talking about lots of things today. Lilia, sorry, Mr. Duncan. Lilia says that question about footballer says bugged me forever. Where does the money come from? Mm. It comes from advertising, and it comes from all the people who are prepared to, to, to spend money on going to see them and on their satellite subscriptions. That's where all the money comes from. Yes, but I suppose if there is demand. And there is a price that must be paid then i suppose everything has its value it's it's rather like going to a pop concert if you are going to see a musical pop concert as mr steve might say maybe you're going to see ariane de grande or uh, elton john shirley bassey shirley bassey well shirley bassey doesn't perform anymore tom uh, jones she's about she's about 95 now isn't she Shirley Bassey. Um, she's got to be in her 80s. Yeah, she's old. So I don't I know. I don't think Shirley Bassey is performing very much. But but I'm talking about pop singers now, you see, like Dizzy Rascal. Are you are you amazed that I know that guy? Dizzy Rascal. You see? Sounds like somebody from the 80s. Yes. <laughs> uh, oh, look, my God, says Polina. This is my first live chat. Oh, uh, welcome welcome we welcome everybody and we like to see new people every week yes and please make lots of comments about what we're talking about yeah don't forget just uh, don't forget to share my youtube channel because we need one million subscribers by the end of the month that's it if everybody shares their channel with five people my channel uh your channel with five other people and they share it with five others it'll go it'll cascade yes. and before you know it you'll be on a million subscribers we are Wouldn't only amazing steve we are only two hundred and seventy thousand subscribers away from one million well yes think about it if we've got 200 people watching us today 200 people share it with five that's uh, that's a thousand oh, okay steve those thousand people share it with another five that's five thousand 10,000 before you know it Mr Duncan you will, 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 you'll have 200,000 subscribers so sh please share Mr Duncan's channel with that's, friends and relatives yeah. that you know that's still not and, enough uh, uh, but it sort of it, it escalates doesn't it Mr Duncan it certainly does uh, <laughs> as, as many things do in life so 5,000 share it with five that's 25,000 25 times five okay Steve etc you, you'll be there in no time yes I'm not the only one. Uh, I don't know if uh, Mahmoud from Egypt, that's his first time on. So welcome if it is. Just above Polina. George Best was the best, says Lewis. Oh, George Best. George Best, yes. He was. Yeah, I think he was. Certainly one of the... Uh, uh, Jeff, <laughs> he was certainly one of the, uh, on. uh, the, the most prominent footballers of his day. Yes. He was, was he famous. The? He was famous for many things. He was famous for for his womanizing. 
he was famous for his drinking and also famous for being a little outrageous sometimes in his behavior but also he was a first-class footballer but he didn't get paid quite as much as the footballers do now I think it was uh, he was uh, one one of these celebrities and uh, famous people who didn't handle the fame very well hmm. and a lot of people who become famous can't really handle the fame yes uh, or you know what happens when the fame goes it's like me I, I can't handle my fame it's very hard I, I, it causes me so much anxiety being famous I have to walk around the town with with a large hat on uh, and I have to cover my face so people don't recognize me it's terrible do you know something that really annoys me Steve hello <laughs> I'm thinking of a, of a smart answer but I couldn't think of one <laughs> what really annoys you apart from me you mean i'll tell you what really annoys me so when you're with a person in a social situation and then they start talking about something they're doing or they're talking about something that they have done and then straight away they get their phone they they get it out and then they start showing you pictures on their mobile phone so they get their phone and they say oh we went on holiday oh look look i went to paris look can you see the picture can you see the picture of me in paris i'm at the louvre look look at me look this is where i went i went on holiday to paris i was in paris and then they bore you with all of their pictures on their mobile phone that they show you the place they've been to or the places they've been to or maybe they're doing something really tedious and boring in their life and they think that you are interested in seeing it as well at the table or in the social situation that you are in so they go oh look look there i am look there i am i'm at the arc de triomphe oh the, that's me at the louvre oh, oh you show off mr oh, duncan oh look there's a waste paper bin can you see the waste paper bin at the louvre oh look there are some armed guards look they've got guns look they've still got guns actually i like the lady she's smiling at me look at that that might be the friendliest armed security person I've ever seen. Look, look, she, she looks so friendly. She's actually giving me a lovely smile there. Can you see that? <laughs> yes, but in an instant she could switch into into anti-terror mode. That's it. I was uh, amazed. But she gave me a lovely big smile. And there she was carrying an AK-47. There's something there's something not quite right about seeing a woman carrying a, 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 a weapon like that oh I know it's controversial I know women of course women can do any job but you you don't expect it you you, you just think well you know she's smiling at you yes I, I but in an instant she could turn into into protection mode a killing machine a killing machine exactly uh, the greatest footballer of all time was Maradona says Satorino oh can I can I just say that Jeff makes a very good point Jeff makes a very good point here it's oh yes I I hate it when people show pictures of their kids uh, as a slideshow on oh. their on their phone oh who wants to see other people's children they certainly don't I don't I have absolutely no interest in looking at pictures of other people's children to be honest it's bad enough being near real ones was that our door someone's knocking at our door do you want me to go and have a look mr duncan well you can if you want does it make you happy someone's at the door <laughs> i can't believe it someone is actually knocking on our front door so i don't know who it is but it's a very strange moment of time and i might be slightly angry later because they are disturbing my live stream who is it steve is it someone interesting I think it's someone selling things even here out in the countryside we get people knocking on our doors and they are selling things deary deary me so the live chat is very busy so thank you very much for your messages today by the way it is coming up to 10 minutes past three mr steve has gone to the door to answer someone who is knocking knocking at the door i wonder who it is it was for, it's very interesting isn't it this are you are you glad you tuned in now i i think you are jeff says i think it might be jehovah's witnesses 
or maybe some mormons so who was it steve well mr duncan who was it it was a man trying to make an amazon delivery you're kidding i'm not kidding that is bizarre uh but he'd come to the wrong house he was looking for oh don't yes i know i'm not going to say <laughs> i don't know with you i don't uh, know it was a very strange house name and i'd never heard of it before okay was it uh, was it cobbler's bottom no there because there, there is there is a house nearby called cobbler's bottom well, i'll tell you what the name is because it's not going to reveal anything okay uh he was looking for a house called plot four plot <laughs> plot four plot four plot four eh? and i have no idea where that is mr duncan yes i don't know uh unless it's a new house it's a very strange name for a house but what a coincidence we were talking about online shopping yeah and a man just knocked on the door to, i should have just said i was this is plot four we could have actually, i want that uh, yes okay steve we could have actually had him on the show we could have had we could have had in the studio here live we could have had an amazon delivery driver i think he'd got other things that he needed to do today yes like get rid of a whole van full of parcels okay uh he was a bit uh, he was puffing and panting a lot yeah. well there will be a lot of puffing because it's sunday i can't believe they're delivering parcels on sunday it's incredible so it looks now as if you could actually buy things on the internet for for seven days a week well i didn't know they delivered on a sunday but obviously they do mr duncan that was quite exciting yes uh he must have thought i was very strangely dressed <laughs> uh but no i've no idea where plot four is no uh so i couldn't advise him i had to send him on his way with with without well he'd have to ask somebody else yes well <laughs> that would be the obvious conclusion of that story uh, cobbler's bottom yes if, if if ever we move to another house steve i am going to call the house that we live in cobbler's bottom well you'll be living there on your own i think that's an uh, that's a brilliant name I, I i'm looking forward to moving to a new house and then i will rename the house cobbler's bottom andrew and then, said why didn't you bring the man in yes it would have been brilliant that would have been such a, a wonderful moment of of live streaming but no i i've never known somebody delivering uh amazon delivery people to ever come into your house because mm. they're always in a big rush they've got piles of of, of parcels in the back of their van yes they've got which time. all have to be delivered by certain yeah. times okay and so they just literally <laughs> want you to sign for the parcel and that's then it. they zoom off in their van yes that's good because I, I wasn't aware of the concept of delivery driver routines <laughs> so they, they actually deliver the parcels to people's houses i know and then they, they have to they, well they've got to you know so if you'd ordered lots of people must have ordered them maybe for next day delivery yes and uh, so he's got uh 20 parcels in the back of his van all with next day delivery yes that have to be delivered okay strangely enough i've never seen mm -hmm. talking about job equality and and women doing men's jobs okay i've never seen anybody delivering an amazon parcel driving who was a woman driver in a van i have oh okay I not have. many though yes and also supermarket deliveries as well so sometimes we we do have a woman that drives a supermarket delivery van so yes you do get you do get the women although they do tend to have very big strong arms i've noticed that maybe that's why but uh, most delivery drivers tend to be men but lot, most of the parcels aren't that heavy they're just normally little small parcels i think that would be a good job i wonder what's the smallest thing you can order on amazon the most the most mundane and pointless thing i wonder what what is the most pointless thing you can buy on amazon and have it delivered to you by by a person driving a huge van what about one toothpick yes I, i'm not pin. sure uh, yes well that's what i mean or maybe a small screw well i think you can literally order a screw one screw <laughs> i'm not sure which websites you've been going to <laughs> mr duncan what uh <laughs> mm, yes i have to go 
goodbye. Oh, I, th I, thought, I thought it was you then. <laughs> that was a bit of excitement, Mr. Duncan. Yes, Kevin Keegan was the English team trainer in France uh, during France's 98 World Cup. Thank you, Antonio, for filling us in with that. I didn't know, you see. Someone has to deliver something for you in order for something. Oh, it's gone. <laughs> Mahmoud it? says it's Ramadan month. I didn't know that. I didn't know it started Ramadan. Yes, Mika uh, says Ramadan. Mika says someone has to deliver something for you in order for something even during the holiday. Oh, I see what you mean. Yes. Yes, I, I'm amazed that they do actual deliveries on a Sunday. It's I'm, amazing. It's the first time. Yes. Uh, so, yes. Um, hmm. Mm. We can't talk about food when uh, during Ramadan because it's going to make people very hungry. OK, Steve. Uh, so uh, we won't talk about food today. Oh. I'll tell you what will put I'll tell you what will put you off uh, thinking about food, my mood. And that's organic wheat bran. Yes. Imagine this. And that will put that will make you uh, think about not eating because it's disgusting. Yes. Uh, and fasting is very good for you, of course. Uh, it's very good for your body to fast because it gives your digestive system a time to rest that's it as well as being a, re a religious uh, of religious significance it's well, actually very well, good for your body well i fast every day when i'm in bed asleep well you don't eat much during the day anyway no but uh yes i mean during uh you can give up things in lent we have lent don't we in the christian calendar where <laughs> people can Okay. To, could not eat food. Yeah. And uh, but that's an interesting subject. Maybe we can talk about that a, a, another, uh, a, a, you know, another week, Mr. Duncan. Yes. Yeah, or never. Uh, so uh, well, uh, Mahmoud says that he wanted to talk about it, so I thought I would mention it. Okay then. As something noteworthy because it's a significant event. Okay, okay. Uh, in uh, some in some religions' uh, calendars. Yes. It's a beautiful uh, in a Muslim, day. Uh, in Muslim okay, calendar, Steve. Of course. Okay, yeah, we've got it, Steve. I know. I'm just mentioning it. <laughs> uh, well, I've got lots of friends, you see, who will be. Who will be I don't. It's all over the world at the same time. Um, is that in, that's huh? interesting? Is it, is it? Is Ramadan all over the world at the same time? I think it could be, because it does move, doesn't it? it it's, it's different every year. I think it moves back or forward. Um, anyway, there you go. So what are we talking about next, Mr. Duncan? I have no idea. I don't know where you're going with this. Well, I'm just uh, commenting on the live chat. OK, then, Steve, I'm trying to get onto another subject if I can. Can I? Yes. OK. You then. can indeed. Good. It's a lovely day today, Steve. Look at the view outside. It's beautiful. It's very, very nice. I've been out there. OK. I've been cleaning the windows. Apparently, because, uh, yeah. Oh, <laughs> apparently, Jamelia says, please don't forget to subscribe if you are new. This is a very good way of finding Mr. Duncan to get his long awaited and well deserved YouTube plaque. Thank you, Jamelia, for for supporting my YouTube channel. And yes, that's the reason why I want to get to one million subscribers this month It's because I want to have my my big gold play button from from YouTube because when I reached 100,000 subscribers I didn't get anything I didn't get a, a silver button so I'm hoping that they will send me a gold button but we still have a long way to go we, we have about 270,000 subscribers that we need to find so don't forget pass my YouTube channel on to all your friends and relatives and even their pets is it possible to order food from McDonald's where you are? Yes, it is. This is something that I can't believe, Steve. I can't believe that this is a real thing, that you can now order McDonald's over the Internet. And then someone on a motorcycle will, will deliver <laughs> McDonald's food to your front door. I can't believe that. I, well, would, imagine, I would imagine by the time to, they get to your house. It must be really cold. It must be stone cold. It must be unedible. It must be because a burger that's been left lying around isn't very tasty. They now, go, pizza's fine. Yeah. 
They go soggy. They go all soggy. Ew. They're sometimes not very nice in the in the shops. Tomic says that I'm ignoring him. I'm not ignoring you, Tomic. It's just that, as I say, every we say every week, it's very difficult to 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 the whole show would turn into making comments about other people's comments. So uh, I have looked back, Tomic, and you you have said your last comment was. Why are we baffled by injustice and stupidity on this planet? I refer to money and football. <laughs> yes, I agree with you. There are lots of things that uh, we shouldn't be baffled about. But uh, there is lots of injustice in the world. And uh, if people keep spending a lot of money on football tickets and, and on, uh, on their Sky TV, uh, then uh, footballers will be paid. Uh, millions of pounds <laughs> so uh, it's uh, yeah it's uh, supply and demand that's yes. that's what we let you know that's the way the world well, nothing we can do about it so I've made a comment about something Tomek said yeah so I well, hope you're happy now well the thing is if there's a demand for something then people will pay anything I mean if you want a nice new diamond for your girlfriend so she will marry you and she will think that you're really wealthy then you have to do it. You have to go to a shop and buy a diamond ring and it might cost you five thousand pounds. So there is a demand for it. So as long as there is a demand for something, then people will pay for it. Yes. If something's in short supply, mm. then uh, or there isn't much of it, like a footballer with a particular skill. Yes. Like a, a doctor with a particular skill. Yes. Like, like a teacher with a particular skill. Uh, or a singer or an actor if you are very very good at some, at you, something you do you've got a particular talent then you're likely if that if that is something in demand you're likely to be paid a lot for it but sometimes I think it's out of proportion but that, never mind Tomic uh, so not Tomic Mr Vodka Man says that he's drinking vodka now and it seems like he's watching the show for the first time ever which oh. I think is very interesting oh. <laughs> Everything oh. looks everything looks new and fresh when you're half drunk. So I've heard. <laughs> what is your favorite food says Fabiana? Curry. Anyth curry. Anything for me? Any food. I will put anything in my mouth. Uh I would definitely say I like cereal, but I would say which is strange. I like cereal, but I would say my favorite food is curry. Okay. Uh, Caribbean food, Indian food, uh, anything with spice in it. Uh, rice and chicken, rice and peas, curry goat, anything like. Oh, I love anything like Sorry. that. Curried goat. Yes. So it's, it's a it's a it's a Caribbean dish. Oh, okay. Then. Uh, but uh, but yeah, yes. I've, we, I've, well, we love cut up with samosas, okay. uh, pakoras, anything like that, anything spicy. OK, then, yes, I've, I've heard that you are heavily into Caribbean dishes. Well, Caribbean sort of curries. Um, and, and, oh, yes, I could um, I could eat curry for breakfast, dinner and tea. OK, then uh, you won't need your bran. <laughs> exactly exactly <laughs> there's one thing for sure you definitely won't need your bran if you if you were to eat curry three times a day i'm pretty sure of that chris says what's your favorite things to do in the garden i like i like clipping back the bushes <laughs> and mowing the lawn i like i like pruning the bushes you know making them into nice nice neat shapes i like neatness and i like mowing the lawns my uh, my least favorite thing is weeding. I hate weeding, which okay. is why I don't like putting plants in. I prefer shrubs because you can just sort of get rid of the weeds much easier. Hey, we are going to take a look in a moment at some words and phrases to do with color. And there are quite a few to get through. We might not have time to do all of them, but we will try our best next sunday by the way we are not here we have yeah. a special guest coming and also next sunday steve is very shocked next sunday there will be a new full english lesson next sunday lots of people have been writing to me asking mr duncan can you please can you please 
please make some new full English lessons so there will be a new one next Sunday instead of us being here live we will be recorded or at least you will yes that is the whole idea so some new full English lessons coming from next weekend next Sunday there will be a new full English lesson <gasps> I'm really really excited about that Sue Cat says Mr Duncan have you ever been to Castle Coombe nope ah Castle Coombe that's a racetrack okay uh, it's a famous racetrack now I haven't um, have you been to Silverstone uh yes it's a it's a racetrack I, I might have been there sorry wait there a second i i remember didn't you go didn't you have a birthday present from someone i did and you drove around in a sports car a performance car i did yes. it was a yes I, I wonder if that was castle Coombe. i don't know i can't remember where that is wherever i went it was in northamptonshire where what what were you driving yes yeah, somebody bought me this present it was a lovely present and it was uh, an, an hour you had an hour I think or two hours uh, on this racetrack and you, you can drive two two different cars okay so I had a Ferrari <laughs> and uh, I drove this I chose this for there are lots of people all going around this track yes okay and uh, so I had a Ferrari and I can't remember what the other one was now uh, it was an old Ferrari but it was quite exciting mm. uh, to drive around this track um but i would i want to do that again mr duncan because i want to go around I, because i've seen one where where they've got ford mustangs oh. so i want to be able to go around the track in a ford mustang yes okay. uh, obviously but i, I thought uh, your i thought your new dream car was was the uh, mercedes s-class uh sue cat says uh it was i meant the town no not the town because Castle Coombe is, is I don't know what the town is like but Castle Coombe is famous for its racetrack mm -hmm. so no we haven't been to the town and nor is Mr Duncan a lot of people um, getting excited by the way because next Sunday there will be a new full English lesson yes it's true and I've got a lot of words and phrases to get through Mr Duncan mm. just a little prompt in your ear that's okay it makes a nice change you doing it to me <laughs> so here we go we've got some words and phrases to do with the word color and also different colors in general so would you like to show us a couple of your words steve oh am i on okay mr duncan right okay so i'm going to do these i thought i got an order here They've all gone in, the, in a different order, Mr. Duncan. So the colours, words and phrases, idioms to do with colour. Now, I thought I'd be clever and do them in the order of the colour spectrum, the light colour spectrum. Uh, so we'll start with white and then we'll split that white light into its colours and we'll go from blue all the way through to red at the other end of the of the color spectrum so let's start with uh, white which of course white light from the sun contains all the different colors so here's the first first one white out a white out is there's basically a snowstorm isn't it if there's a white out it means you're cut caught in a snowstorm and you can't see anything because it's so bright is that right mr duncan a white out it is yes a, a sudden blizzard or a sudden snowstorm you can say there is a white out it's also apparently a brand of uh, of uh, correction fluid uh o over your words called ah, yes. white out so you can paint it on if you've made a mistake uh uh white as a ghost if you say someone is as white as a ghost or white as a sheet it means you think that they're not very well or they don't look very well or they've had a bit of a shock so if you say what's wrong with you you're as white as a sheet or you're as white as a ghost are you, are you well because if someone's color drains from their face they don't look very well or you might say what's happened you're as white as a sheet and that means uh, that they've had a shock if somebody has a sudden shock the color drains from their face and it's obvious on that from their expression as well um, so if anybody says that to you you might have had a, you might have heard some bad news suddenly 
and you go as white as a ghost or as white as a sheet um, if somebody is lily white not lilia white but lily white it means um, there is white a lily is a flower that comes in many colors but normally they're white and it's a pure white and if you say somebody is as white as a lily it means that they're pure untouched blameless her skin was lily white if you somebody described if you're a girl and somebody described your skin as lily white it's probably a compliment it means you've got flawless perfect skin unlike me and mr duncan um, but it also means that somebody it, it not just referring to your appearance it also means that uh, you are of, uh, of good character and you haven't you don't do bad things so for example uh, that man has done nothing wrong he has a lily white record so if you've got a lily white record it means that you you don't do bad things don't or you can say that in the negative don't be fooled by that apparent lily white exterior she's anything but so some people can appear to be pure and uh, and say all the right things and act in a in a in a holy way but in fact they might not be underneath a similar expression to that is whiter than white if somebody describes you as whiter than white or as white as snow uh, that means that they're blameless uncorrupt they don't do anything wrong they play by the rules there's no dirt on them uh, he or she is whiter than white it means they don't do they haven't done anything wrong he didn't do it he's as white he's whiter than white <laughs> you can do that say that in the negative as well of course you can say that uh, 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 for example you have to take some of the some you have to take some of the blame in this dispute you're not whiter than white yeah. so if you say that you're indicating that the person who who is arguing thinks that they haven't done anything wrong but they may be wrong and they may well have done so Ooh. you're say, you're not whiter than white okay uh, you know don't say to me i've done something wrong when, when you do bad things as well so somebody could be described as being uh, um uh, whiter than white it means that they uh, you can use that in the negative as well as in the positive way yes it's probably worth mentioning at the moment as well there is a trend to actually use white in a positive way and the opposite black in a negative way and I this was is, coming on to that yes I'm I, I'm pretty sure you are if we ever get to the end of the spectrum <laughs> <laughs> we're still on white I well mr. Duncan there's a lot of white phrases yes. so, but that's an interesting point you brought up though because um which can be seen as controversial but it's just the fact that when it this white and black when, when black if you describe something as white it's usually seen as pure and good and and uh and positive whereas when you describe something as black it's usually seen as negative or or, or bad and that's just because before we had if you go back hundreds of years before we had uh, electric light or candles and things like that people were afraid of the dark because hundreds of years ago thousands of years ago when the sun went down that's when the wild animals would come out and and kill you so the it was always dangerous the darkness was always associated with danger and light was always associated with uh, with positive things but as soon as the sun rises oh, everything's all right again because we're all afraid of the dark that's a primeval uh feeling that we have that whenever it's dark there's something to be frightened of because that's when all the bad things come out which of course goes back as i say thousands of years ago so that's where that comes from <laughs> it Mr. was duncan's laughing it was hundreds of years you said hundreds of years and then suddenly it's thousands of years well hundreds or thousands of, i mean you imagine think right. back what think I'm, back to yes. thousands of years ago before before we had any kind of artificial light 
then as soon as the sun goes down, you're frightened because yeah. the wolves are going to come and get you. The bears are going to come out of the forest. The bears? Yes. Well, whatever wild animals that used to be roaming around. I'm not sure. Uh, I'm not Steve. I'm not sure if there are many bears in much Wenlock. You wouldn't. Well, there would have been thousands of years ago. Okay. So you don't. You wouldn't wander off into the woods in the dead of night, because it's dangerous. You might trip over and fall. Uh, an animal could come out and eat you. You might. You might get a splinter. You can't see because we rely primarily on our on our ability to see and for that you need the light from the sun okay. uh, so we're not like a lot of nocturnal animals that that you scent or you sound to get about uh, we're w w without light we're, we're hopeless yeah uh, uh, actually, actually i'll tell you something so so when was this actual period was it the dark ages the dark ages refers to a period in history when uh, when it was perceived that uh, there was a lot of oppression going on. Yes. Uh, but yes, again, the, 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 they, the Dark Ages w was a bad uh, period of time yes. uh, when uh, there was a lot of oppression of yes. people. And of course, that's what that's what the what I'm trying to say. That's why we associate good things and with, with using the word white and bad things with black. And it's simply because of the relationship we have with light and, yeah. and night and day so light and dark that's they, where it comes from yeah they're often seen as opposing things and I, I suppose also you could you could talk about death as well but that's it exactly so you think yes. of black you think of nothing you think of darkness so i can see why the connotation tends to be negative even though nowadays of course we, we, we are much more sensitive about the way we use the words white and black I think so but it's just that's you know that's just unfortunate uh, right so let's go on to when there's no light uh, black market a black market is an illegal trade in something drugs cigarettes I nearly said CDs but nobody buys CDs anymore do they <laughs> <laughs> if if something is being sold illegally or, or or cheaper than it should be here mate do you want some of these i've got some cigarettes here do you want some they're on the cheap and you might have got them you might have they might it could be stolen goods something like that a black market trade something that you buy illegally uh, usually these days it refers to drugs uh, a black list a black list is a if you if you're on a is a list of people or organ, or an organization or groups that are banned or under suspicion uh if you yourself are on a black list then uh, it means that uh, people think you've done something wrong and you might be on a black list for example to get into a nightclub or into into a pub uh or, or because you've done something bad or people think you've done you might have beaten somebody up in a nightclub and so you go on their night on their blacklist they won't let you in for a period of time um i'm putting you on my blacklist you might say that as a joke to somebody if they say something to you which is uh, you, you find uh, uh, slightly or mildly offensive you might say oh, i'm not talking to you you're going on my blacklist don't mean it that seriously but it just means that you're it you've got a, a bad mark against your name yes you know what it reminds me of as well steve it reminds me of the mccarthy era in the united states when there was a lot of paranoia concerning people being or supporting communism and uh, a lot of actors a lot of people in in entertainment the entertainment business were were blacklisted because they they seemed to support communism or the communist party so there was a, a very famous period a very notorious period in the united states when people were punished they were often blacklisted they couldn't get jobs mm. because they were on a list of mm. people uh, who was were deemed to be uh, not suitable and one of them was charlie chaplin that's right charlie chaplin was blacklisted We've already had uh, a, a black mark. We, we mentioned that earlier. If you've got a black mark against your name, it means you've done something uh, that has, has deemed you in the eyes of certain people to be uh, uh, somebody that they don't want to deal with. 
Uh, and and that, that can go on for a period of time. You might have a black mark against your name for speeding, for example, at work. So if you're in a job that, 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 that means you've got to do a lot of driving, then you might say something like John John's speeding ticket was a black mark on his record, which cost him his job as a salesperson. Um, I'm putting a black mark against you, Mr. Duncan, for that remark. That's a more offhand way of saying it. Uh, right. Uh, a black sheep. If you've got a black sheep in the family, uh, that is a person in the family who has done something wrong or shameful and that has put the family name in a bad light. It's somebody, everybody has somebody in their family who is a black sheep, who doesn't do uh, the right things or what the family want them to do. A bad person, not necessarily a bad person. It might have been years ago. It could have been uh, uh, a girl who had a baby who wasn't married. She, she's a black sheep of the family. Or it could be a, 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 a man that's uh, maybe you've maybe you've been in prison uh, and you've done something wrong and you and it's brought shame on the family. You, you're the black sheep of the family. Uh, it's how that's used. But something positive about about black is being in the black. Uh -huh. If you are in the black uh -huh. with your bank account, mm -hmm. it means that you are uh, you've got money in your bank. Yes. Uh, the opposite to that is being in the red. If you're in the red, then it means that you're you're probably uh, in arrears with the bank. You owe the bank money. <laughs> oh, uh, what was that? Or you're you're in overdraft with the bank. So if you're in the black, I don't know whether this. I think we still use that phrase, don't we? If you're in the black, it means you've got money in your bank. Well, businesses when they uh, when they they rec record their or report their profits, so they will say whether they are in the red or the black. <clears throat> right. So we've had black so far. We've had white. What's what? If you mix black and white together, what do you get? <laughs> you get grey, uh, but the nearest to that is silver. <laughs> oh, it's the Duncan. <laughs> yes. You get a, a, an interracial couple. <laughs> Here we go. So if, uh, silver is the closest to, to grey. So here's a phrase. Every cloud has a silver lining. Probably everybody knows that. It, it's, it's, a, it's an idiom, and it just means that uh, look for the positive uh, in a negative situation. So say your girlfriend or your boyfriend's just left you and you're feeling very low. Somebody might say, look, I know you're sad now, but every cloud has a silver lining. So in other words, the cloud being the breakup. But look, now you have opportunity to find somebody new. So the silver linings is, is something nice. So every cloud has a silver lining. You might lose your job, but in that loss of that job, there could be the opportunity to find something better. So looking for the positive or looking for opportunity uh, in adversity is what that phrase means. And it is a very real thing. There is always opportunity out there. So, right, we're on the we're on the color spectrum. We had white light. Uh, which contains all the colours. So we're starting off with the with the short wavelengths, Mr. Duncan, and we're into blue. Oof. We're into blue. Are you blue in the face, Mr. Duncan? Are you blue in the face? Are you at the point of extreme frustration when trying to convince somebody of something? So you, you, you're having an argument with somebody. You're trying to trying to get some point over, and the other person just can't understand it, and they keep pushing against you, and you get more and more angry and frustrated uh, and you uh, and you go the, the description is that you go blue in the face with frustration i argued with a man till i was blue in the face i just couldn't get him to understand what i was trying to say you go blue in the face as opposed to going red in the face which is when you're getting very angry if you go blue in the face it's it's out of frustration more than anger mm. because you can't get then i often get blue in the face with mr duncan because he can't understand uh, something I'm trying to tell him, uh, and it's frustration rather than anger. I don't think I'm on my own there, though. As being blue in the face. I don't think I'm on my own, not understanding what Steve is going on about. I think a lot of people have that problem. <laughs> you can go into the blue, into the blue. It means going into the unknown, 
or off in a far distance so the blue means here really means the sky if you look up at the sky when there's no clouds it seems to go on forever it's infinite it's a long way away uh, so if you go up there you're going into the unknown let's take a trip into the blue it, <laughs> it means mr duncan's laughing it means that you're going off into the unknown you might make a spontaneous trip oh let's just go off into the blue just just go off and take a, a trip somewhere at random but it can it can it can mean other things for example uh, this new job role is like taking into a trip it's like taking a trip into the blue i have no idea what i'm doing so if you take on a new role you've had no training um and you're unprepared it's going into the unknown you're unprepared you're going into the blue but uh the opposite to that or, or, or is that you can come out of the blue uh, so something can come out of the blue so you might be going off into the blue sky but something uh, can unexpectedly happen uh, or seemingly come from nowhere something unforeseen can happen and when that happens you describe it as oh that, that just came out of the blue so somebody might say something to you call you a horrible name and you might say where did that come from that just that came what where did that remark come from it just came out of the blue why did you say that uh, you might be driving on the road and a, and, and a pedestrian might cross the road and and you didn't see them and you nearly nearly knocked them over you might say that that per person just came out of the blue they came from seemingly from nowhere out of the blue comments can come out of the blue uh, a job offer could come out of the blue i had applied for that job i hadn't heard anything suddenly the offer came out of the blue so we're moving from into a slightly longer wavelengths now mr duncan we're going into green great as we move across the color spectrum uh green a green light a green light is is a permit to say to, to say something you've got the permission to do something if you get the green light to do something it's like a traffic light on green it means green for go it means you can do something uh, so mr duncan gave me the green light to talk about color idioms so i said you are you are able to do it i will let you do it that's right i gave you the green light uh, this report looks very good but i can't release it yet until i've uh, had the green light from my boss so somebody else has to give the permission to do for something to happen um i can't start work on the project until i've had the green light from the boss green light if you've had a green light it means you've give, been given permission to do something uh, you might be a little green mm -hmm. if you are a little green it means you're a bit naive a bit innocent a bit inexperienced mm. uh, oh I don't think uh, I don't think uh, John's going to be able to to go out with Mandy. Uh, she's far too experienced. I think he's I think he's a bit green there thinking he can go out with her. Uh, he's a little green, but I'm sure he'll soon get the hang of his new job. They said that to me, actually, when I started in sales, I got no experience. And my boss said, you're a bit green, but I'm sure you'll still pick it up. So it means you're in, if somebody says you're a bit green, you're inexperienced and it could be in many things. Would, would anyone go out with a girl called Mandy? Probably not. That was no. probably not a good example. But if you're if you're green in something, it means you're inexperienced in it. Uh, uh, um, yeah, so typically used to describe maybe a new job uh, that you've just taken a new job role on. Uh, you've had no training, very little experience, but you've been given the job. But you're a bit green, a bit green round the gills, a bit green round the edges. You just need no. to get a bit of experience. No, green round the gills means unwell. OK, then. Yeah. Green with envy. We all know this one. Uh, it's it's used to describe the appearance of somebody when they're very envious of somebody else for something when people are envious they take on a certain expression and it appears that they and it's just used to describe somebody who's envious uh, you might say huh you, you you might say I'm green with envy at your new car 
Um, but you might actually have an expression that, that, that goes with it. You can be green fingered. If you're green fingered, that's somebody who's very good at gardening. And whenever they seem to put plants in, they always seem to thrive and do well. A green for somebody because there are people who, who are not very good at gardening. And when they seem to anything they seem to touch in the garden or with house plants, they always seem to die. But somebody who's very who, who seems to be very good at gardening, you describe them as green fingered. Well, I'm getting a bit tired, Mr. Duncan. Do you want me to go on? We're moving on to yellow. Oh, yellow. We're, we're moving through the spectrum. We're moving through the spectrum. The so, wavelengths are getting longer and longer. So this is this is like looking at a rainbow, really. A ra exactly. A rainbow. Red, yellow, pink, green, orange, purple, blue. Uh, there weren't that many for yellow. In fact, there was only one I could find. Oh. Um, to have a yellow streak or to have a yellow belly. That's a bit of a nasty phrase, really. But if you've got a yellow streak, it means you're a bit of a coward or you're afraid to to do risky things. Uh, for example, someone who is a coward or fearful or scared of doing something because they think it might be too dangerous or too risky is described. You might there might somebody might say you've got a yellow streak down your back uh, um, if you're too frightened to do something for example if you with a group of friends and they're all they're all jumping into a lake uh for example but you're you stand at the side you're too afraid to do it they might say oh you yellow belly jump in um but yes yellow is associated with sort of fear and cowardice mm. no um, one calls me yellow exactly if somebody says you're yellow you are it means that they think you're a bit of a coward uh, so you don't really want to be described as yellow by the way in china a yellow man is a man that makes pornography really yes <laughs> don't, so ask, don't ask me how i know that we're nearly at, we're nearly at red which is a long wavelength we're on pink if you're in the pink it means you're very healthy you're in the pink you're healthy uh, physically and mentally probably um yes i was i had flu a month ago but now i'm in the pink so you, you you were ill you were probably in bed but in the pink of course it refers to the fact that when people are well they've got a, a pink rosy hue uh to their face um because if you look gray or, or white that's associated with being unhealthy so the opposite is in the pink i'm in the pink i'm feeling really well on top of the world uh mentally and physically um slightly different to rose colored uh rose if you if you see something uh through rose colored spectacles or rose colored glasses we're talking about those sorts of glasses then it means that you always see the cheerful or optimistic side of life and we know these people, don't we? We always see people who are always optimistic and uh, they look at life through rose tinted glasses. So if you had some glasses and they were they had a had a rosy tint to them, the world would all seem wonderful. It would seem brighter and much nicer. And uh, but quite often people who see life through rose tinted sunglasses uh, take the the knocks or the when bad things happen in life they often take it quite badly because they are unprepared uh, for uh, the, the bad things that sometimes happen in life he sees the world through rose tinted glasses but when things go wrong he gets very upset um, so I'm the opposite of that aren't I Mr Duncan I so, always assume things are going to go wrong yes. so I never see life through rose tinted glasses I always assume it's going to go wrong and then I'm never disappointed when it is that's it <laughs> your, your outlook is quite often a very black yes exactly as it were <laughs> we've had this one if you're if you're in the red it means that your bank balance is uh, you're probably in overdraft uh, if you're out of the red it means that uh, uh, your bank balance is healthy and you've got plenty of money. Uh, oh, here's one, Mr. Duncan, that I get quite often on yeah. the roads. Crabs. There's no answer to that. Red mist. Oh, okay. The red mist. 
the red mist descends if the red mist descends that means you become uncontrollably angry at something and it's often used to describe road rage um my a friend of mine who gets very angry on the roads says oh i somebody overtook me and, and nearly cut me up in the traffic and the red mist descended and i was bidding my horn and uh, chased after him down the road the red mist mm. it means it's just anger uncontrollable anger comes over you many serious crimes have taken place in in that moment in the red mist moment in that when moment. you just snap and you lose control and you might have a bit of road rage in that moment of anger be like a red rag to a bull so uh, obviously your sort of traditional beliefs is that if you if you have a, a, a red flag or a red piece of cloth and you wave it in front of a bull they'll get very angry uh, they're colour blind, actually, so they don't. It's nothing to do with that. It's the movement yeah. that they get attracted to. But uh, the phrase "like a red rag to a bull" means that you say something or do something to somebody, and it's like a trigger um, that gets them to behave in a certain way. So uh, uh, somebody might say, "Oh, don't say that. Don't say that to John. That's like a red rag to a bull to to him." So you might it might be something that he's very sensitive about or somebody's very sensitive about and that the slightest mention of it might get them very angry or reacting in a certain way, like a red rag to a bull. Uh, if you are caught red handed, caught red handed, you say that to a, a criminal, uh, say you were shoplifting and uh, Somebody, you, you walked out of the shop and somebody said, aye, aye, what are you doing? And uh, they look through your pockets and you've got something that you've stolen in <laughs> right in your hand or on you. Aye, aye. Uh, <laughs> it means you're caught red handed. You've got that hot stolen property in your hand or in the boot of your car or in your house. You're caught red handed. <laughs> Uh, uh, it, you could be smoking around the back of the bike sheds at school aye, aye. and it's you're not supposed to be <laughs> smoking in school and uh, somebody catches you and you can say you were caught red handed aye, uh, aye. literally with a cigarette in your mouth. So Definitely. if you're caught doing something you shouldn't be doing, then you, you, you say that you are caught red handed. Aye, aye. <laughs> That's it. That's that's all the ones I've got. But the one that's related to colour uh, is that it's something that's if you tone something down. OK. If you tone something down. So a tone is like a colour uh, or it could be it could be a, a mood or a quality of something. Um, or it, it could be an attribute or emo an emotion or a feeling. It doesn't have to be colour, a tone, a certain a certain tone of a conversation a tone of it could be an angry tone or or a happy tone or a loving tone um so it means to moderate something if you tone something down it means to reduce it to to moderate uh the, the something an argument or a conversation uh, or a piece of writing yeah for example somebody might uh, somebody to make something less strong or less intense or you less tone it down less extreme less extreme you might say somebody might be talking very enthusiastically or in an angry way about something and you might say oh can you tone that down a bit mm. you know you know reduce the volume don't talk in such an expressive way uh, the author toned down the anger in his piece of writing so we might have been using words which were which were very uh, expressive and um, but the piece of writing didn't the, the, to get that published you had to use words or phrases that weren't uh, quite so uh, in your face um, will you tone it down you might yes. say to somebody if they're being a bit overly emotional that's it so it's in its general sense tone can refer to the shading or the color of something or how, it. how extreme something might be as well so tone tone can also relate to sound as well so the That's tone right. so the tone can be the high frequencies or the low frequencies or how 
high or low the sound is with the frequency, the tone. You can turn the tone down or you can in increase the tone. If Miss we were talking about uh, my favourite subject about cars and I was going on and on and getting very irate or about environmental issues yeah. and I was getting more and more irate and, 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 and really sort of putting my point across, Mr Duncan might say, oh, tone it down a bit. Yeah. So I just, just, OK, just relax a bit. Let's yeah. not get quite so emotional. Tone it down. OK. Well, we are going to tone it right down now because... We've come to the end of today's live stream. How perfectly, Mr. Duncan, I got through all the spectrums uh, of colour in terms of our idioms and phrases. Yeah, you, 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 if there's one thing I'm sure of, Mr. Steve is definitely on the spectrum somewhere. <laughs> yes, that's a good one, Mr. Duncan. If you say you're on the spectrum, okay, it means that you're uh, that you're slightly mentally ill, or you've got some mental issue uh, that may need. Uh, that may need addressing because sometimes people behave in a very odd way uh, and and it appears like they could be a bit mentally ill but you use you use a phrase there i think they're on the spectrum meaning they're on the spectrum of mental health or ill health somewhere we just sneaked another one in there mr duncan yes maybe sort of gradients or, or a, a gradient of of your 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 mental frailness or fragility maybe okay steve talking of which mr steve has to go now and what am i going to do mr duncan you are going to make a cup of tea and you are going to put two tea cakes in the toaster we've got 35 seconds till four o'clock yes and we're going now all right mr duncan Catch we're not later. seeing you next week are you so i will i'll see you in two weeks with mr duncan and but I don't know if I'm going to be in the lesson or not. But anyway, bye bye and see you next time out there in the blue. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Steve. That's lovely. So Mr. Steve is now going to say goodbye. There he goes. So Steve is now leaving the building. Thanks a lot for your company. Yes, it's four o'clock and we are going to finish on time just for a change. Thank you very much for your lovely messages today. Let's have a quick look at the live chat before we go. Thank you very much for your lovely comments. Don't forget, you can watch this live stream all over again if you are that kind of person who loves pain and agony. <laughs> I will not be here next week on the live stream, but there will be a new full English lesson next week. Can you believe it? So thanks a lot for your company today. And that is just about it. That is almost everything for today. We are now out of time. This is Mr. Duncan in the birthplace of English saying thanks for watching. We won't be here next week, but there will be a brand new full English lesson. And of course, until the next time we meet here on YouTube, you know what's coming next. Yes, you do. Ta-ta for now.